Trust is the biggest complexity killer and one of the biggest assets. Why do I think so and what is the relevance for you? Where do you have to pay attention? Where to change or set priorities for the future? Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The Cambridge Dictionary defines trust as to believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you, or that something is safe and reliable. Looking at this definition, trust seems to be one of the most important words, probably in the same category as freedom or love. But why is it the number one complexity killer? And how is it created? Let's assume you trust somebody or something. How do you behave? Do you check every detail before you engage with the person or before you buy or use something? No, of course not. But what if you do not trust? You have to check everything, engage a lawyer to write big contracts and so on and so on. On the lowest level of trust, you do not use a product or engage with a person even if the offer seems to be good because you fear dishonesty or even harm. You see, it is very complex to live in a non-trusted situation because you have to add many steps that are not needed with trust. Life becomes much more complicated or complex. If we look around us, we see that an increasing part of product cost has to be paid for complexity. Thousands of new lawyers enter the field every year and more and more laws seem to be necessary all the time. But our lives are even more affected. If we cannot trust, we lose too much time to check if everything works as promised or expected. So it seems to be extremely important to create trust to free up all those resources and save our money and time. A few essential questions arise. Whom do we trust? How is trust created or destroyed? Here is what I think. The easiest way to create trust is by believing, an advantage of religions, and of communities that work similarly. This is why the Pope or similar persons are trustworthy, even if we do not know them personally or did any transactions with them before or we trust that there is something after our death and adjust our behavior, even if most of us have no proof for it. A lot of religious people report that their life is easier because of that trust. This level of trust usually is not too relevant for our business or hobby, but there is more. The second way to create trust is the clan. Most people trust their family or close friends. The trust level is reduced with the distance from our tribe, especially if different languages, beliefs or looks are involved. This is why we trust if a good friend says that he or she is happy with the product. And this is where social media want to participate and where they created the new profession of influencers. We will later see what this means for this channel. The third way to create trust is branding. If we look at which professions are trustworthy, for example, we see that firefighters or nurses are globally on top, even if most of us never needed firefighters. Engineers, luckily, seem to be relatively high on this scale too. IT specialists are ranked lower. And if software companies continue with weekly release cycles and testing by the user, we will probably see them going down every year a little more. If you are a politician, you suffer from branding because this profession seems not trustworthy at all. I always thought that car salespeople are at the bottom. So I learned something. Branding is great because it can copy trust in a new product or service. If you see a nurse you never saw before, she or he will most probably profit from the brand and you trust without any further proof. Cool! 
The same applies to BMW or IKEA, by the way. All these examples assume that the trusted brand is already established. But if we deal with something new and without the brand, how can trust be created from scratch? How can you build your brand? Trust usually is created by learning. If you used something many times without hassle, you would trust it. If you used several products of a formerly unknown brand with success, you trust the brand. And if somebody gave you good advice or helped you in difficult situations, you trust this person. This route, of course, is the hardest, but it is usually needed if you are not a Pope, family or a firefighter. These were my two cents, but who do you trust and why? Can you agree with my analysis? The discussion in the comments is open as usual. The next question is, of course, how trust is destroyed. It is destroyed the same way as it is created just with a negative sign and usually much, much faster. Defective or unreliable products, lying and cheating are fast trust killers. As a rule of thumb, if you exceed expectations, you increase trust and if you do not meet expectations, you destroy it. So managing of expectation is a big part of creating trust. Under promise and over deliver is a good rule for success. Maybe you ask yourself, how valuable is my personal brand for my environment? What is my plan to increase its value? January 2021 is a perfect time to create such a plan. Now we look at this channel and we see these principles working. The first and foremost showcase is AliExpress. Without AliExpress, this channel would not exist because our hobby still would be complicated and expensive. I placed my first order in 2013 and most of my friends, including my wife, said that I'm crazy to send money to China. According to what we learned before, the Chinese were far from my tribe and therefore did not deserve a lot of trust. For a lot of people, their trust level probably was below politicians on the trust scale. Why did I place the first order against good advice? And what was wrong with me to order a milling machine for $2,195 one month later? I did it because I only had to trust AliExpress, not each merchant. They promised I get my money back when the products do not arrive or if they are faulty. The only product AliExpress sold back then was trust. And probably still is. Back then, they used 100% tracked packages. Like that, the merchants, who of course also did not trust this bloody guy with a Swiss accent, saw when I got the package and when their money was due. So both sides only had to trust AliExpress. A perfect idea. Remember, Jack Ma, Alibaba's founder, became the wealthiest Chinese. Just by selling trust. I have to admit, some people would call me naive. I'm an optimistic person and usually see the good before I suspect the bad. This helped me to reduce the complexity of my life considerably and increase my success. But I also had to pay a fee once or twice. Still, it was an excellent decision for me. If you are young, think about it. Over time, AliExpress became an established brand and a lot of people purchase with them. The same applies to Amazon, by the way, with the difference that it was much easier for an American company to establish trust in Europe or the US. Yes, I know that not everybody has the same experience and do not trust or buy from them. The next example is the content of my channel. If I read the comments, I know that many people trust me or my opinion. Why is that? For the Swiss, maybe because I'm Swiss and belong to their tribe. For the engineers, too, because I'm one of them. For all others, I had to earn the trust by creating more than 350 videos where I try things out, compare and test or do some projects that can be copied. 
I reduce your life's complexity and free your time because with this trust, a lot of you hit the order button without too much thinking. The biggest complaint in the comments, by the way, is that you order too much after viewing my videos. Many viewers also write that they restarted their hobby, found a job or even started their own company with this channel's help. I'm delighted when I read such content. If you, my viewers, would not trust me, the content would be of much less value because you would have to do the tests or comparisons yourself or you would not buy something because you would not trust that it works. Like video number 191, published in March 2018, where I introduced a vector network analyzer for $150. Before, such devices cost a few thousand dollars and nobody trusted that these cheap toys have any value. I ordered one and went to a colleague to compare the cheap device with an expensive one from a trusted company. In the video, I was able to show that it is good enough for our purpose. Because I was able to create trust, many, many viewers bought such a device. And I know most of them were extremely happy with that decision. Nowadays, everybody involved with antennas has such a cheap VNA in his lab or shack. Trust at its best. I could now use my earned trust and become an influencer by working together with companies interested in using my hard-earned trust for their purposes. Companies these days pay a lot of money for trust because it is precious. If Roger Federer uses Nike shoes to play tennis, this fact is worth millions. He sells his trusted relationship with his fans to Nike and other companies. I tried a light version of this concept by accepting free of charge goods. I stopped it as soon as I had enough Patreon money to pay for all products used on the channel. I can assure you, it is different to review something you got free of charge. And I wouldn't say I liked this feeling. Now you know what you can expect if YouTube shows this video contains paid promotions. Another thing is companies who sponsor the channel with products or services like Patreons. They deserve to be mentioned because they help all of us, like the Swiss Keysight distributor in video number 245. You see, the heart of this channel is that you can trust me. With this trust, you can reduce your life's complexity and have more time for fun, or be more successful in what you do. This is also why the channel carries my name, and this will not change as long as it exists. Also, no change is planned with the ads. I still refuse to enable mid-roll ads because I never liked them. Personally, I recently changed to YouTube Premium and I have to admit that I should have done it much earlier because as a heavy YouTube user, it is much more fun to watch my favorite channels without ads and still support the creators. Two things, however, will change in the new year. The first, fewer mailbag videos. Looking at the list of low-performing videos, I discovered a lot of mailbags. This tells me that you do not like them too much. And second, I will adapt the frequency of videos to Great Scott's schedule. Three videos in a row and then one Sunday without the video. This reduces my workload and leaves room for side projects, which sometimes also appear on the channel, but on Thursdays. I hope to adjust my schedule to Great Scott that you always have at least one video on Sunday if you are subscribed with both channels. Running such a channel needs a lot of resources. This is why I immensely thank all my patrons for their support. You help a lot to keep the channel independent. As you saw, the rest of the viewers also profit from this fact. I hope this special video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. I wish you a happy and successful 2021.